tragic news for you as always. I did not finish The Bone Witch yet. I'm starting to wonder if this channel is just going to be instead of Ashley Kristen or Ashley Reads, it's just going to be the girl who didn't finish The Bone Witch yet. Dot dot dot. That's where we're at right now. That is where we're at. But I'm 95% done and Libby tells me that if I just sat my butt in this chair and read it, that I would be done in 19 minutes. I'm just... Nothing's been... Some things have been resolved. There was an interesting plot twist at the end, but it didn't really... It was like, oh, okay, I wouldn't have guessed that, but then there wasn't really to my knowledge any foreshadowing of that plot twist and I felt like it was only thrown in there just to be like oh ha, 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 I bet you didn't guess that and I'm like no I, I didn't but you also didn't answer every other question I've had about the book although okay it did answer my question about what happened to her brother as to why he's not with her in the present and sort of who the person in the gravestone is it really didn't answer that and i'm pretty sure assuming i inferred what they were trying to say with the whole color the person was wearing i'm kind of inferring who it is and i'm not happy this i had one character that i was interested in and now i feel like Oh, the ending I wanted won't happen unless there's going to be an actual love triangle in the sequel are we still in the past in the sequel too like okay I'm gonna finish the book so that I can stop talking about it and I probably will read the sequel but I'm gonna need a whole month a whole month off so it will not be happening in October for the oh, for Crooked Kingdom, I am almost 70% done, if not already 70% done. And wow, this is tense. There is a lot going on. There's still a slow burn happening that I'm just dying. And I'm, I should be grateful that we got romance between the other pairs. But my favorite couple, I'm just like, kiss. Please kiss. That's all I want. There's there's less than 25, there's less than 30% of the book left. And I, I'm just worried that like someone's going to die and they're not actually going to kiss. Okay, I am also reading The Secret Garden, which I am 60% of the way done with. It's different, definitely, than like Crooked Kingdom or the, the Ninja Daughter or anything like that. But it is like a nice refreshing read. I really like the sound effects in the background and uh, the music. It just feels like you're kind of in a little magical atmosphere. I am about 10% in on the Ninja Daughter. I did finally start that. There are a lot of content warnings. So just a heads up that yeah, I'm literally the first the first 10%. I was like five or six different content warnings and I was like oh okay so we're we're just jumping in here okay that's a lot I am yeah I'm who I'm gonna stick through it I do I did really enjoy getting to chat with Tori Eldridge about this series and I think that she was right in that it is a good start for me to jump into thrillers because it's almost to some degree like sitcom meets murder slash thriller so that's interesting because you're reading these terrible things that had happened or could happen but it's just very crisp and casual to a way that you're like surprised by the content I guess it just doesn't really fit with the story but in a in an interesting way that makes you want to keep reading at least personally and I think that you can really see Tori's personality coming out in the way that she writes and I find that endearing how detailed she is especially with the fight scenes you know it's very obvious that 
she knows what she's talking about. Normally, I would say that the info dumping, I, I guess I would say info dumping pulls out of the story when I've seen it in other stories. And I'm not really getting that yet, although it does, it does make me tired at night. It's not something that I feel like my brain is up to when I'm getting ready for bed to kind of take in all of that information about like fighting or martial arts or things that Lily is, the char main character Lily is involved in that I am new to. But I do like it. I'm going to keep reading that. I think I'm on our like chapter 10 and my um, my friend Migi that's reading it is a couple chapters ahead of me so I need to power through but I ordered Pizza Hut so I'm trying to make this fast because I need to be there even though it's contactless delivery and what else am I reading I have not started Into the Void yet with Amber so I need to start that by this weekend ideally I don't think she started it yet either though so Yes. What else? I I finished reading the excerpt of Black Buck and wrote a mini review to enter a raffle on bookishfirst.com and I came home today and found out I had won the raffle and it seems as though I will be getting a print copy arc of Black Buck. It will be my first physical copy of an arc. I'm so excited, guys. This is this is goals, honestly. And the book comes out mid-January, a little before mid-January. So they said that I should get the book within two weeks of the published date. So I should ideally have it by Christmas. I'm just so excited. I have always dreamed about getting ARCs. And I, have, I did actually get a physical ARC from a comic con that my dad went to one time. It was a, a book by Rochelle Mead and that was awesome but I didn't go myself and I didn't like do anything to get the book so this one feels like I really worked for it. And <laughs> yes, I, from NetGalley I also got an excerpt of A Vow So Bold and Deadly. And I am very excited to read that, like incredibly excited. It is the final book in the trilogy of A Curse So Dark and Lonely by Bridget Kemmerer. That's right. Yeah, it came to me now. I am hoping that she posts the actual full book as an arc through NetGalley or Bookish First. I would adore the chance to get an arc of that. I... I love that series, even though I like the wrong people together, but it's fine. I always do that. To the library today, and I picked up my hold of Dragonfly and Amber, which unintentionally matches my dress almost, so that was fun. It feels <laughs> a little too orange today, but the last one that I read was a mass market paperback, and this one is... It's huge. I'm very concerned about the fact that I signed up to read this in the month of October. And this isn't even the next book that I'll be reading because I'll be starting Into the Void. I guess, yeah. It's already October 6th and both The Secret Garden and Crooked Kingdom were not technically on my TBR list. So unless I manage to fit them in, Ninja Daughter is the first book that I'm actually reading for October, and if I wanted to read all 12 books in time, I should be finishing book three by this weekend. So I am very behind. Pretty much it for Tuesday. I will get back into reading Crooked Kingdom and putting off reading The Bone Witch, as I usually do. <laughs> It is Wednesday night. It is also, well, it's technically Thursday because it's 1.30 in the morning. And I <laughs> really should be asleep right now. So I'm going to make this as quick as I can. 
I am really torn because I decided I would already look at my November selection of the book that I want to buy. And I was planning on buying, what's it called? Send Me Their Souls by Sarah Wolf. Because that is the last book in the trilogy of Bring Me Their Hearts. And I really enjoyed that trilogy. I think I gave it three or four stars for the first two books. But the third book has a different cover artist. They did it in-house with Entangled Teen because they weren't able to contact the original cover artist during the quarantine. So in my personal opinion, the cover is not great. And I did find pre-order goodies for A Vow So Bold and Deadly by Bridget Kemmerer. I'm really excited about that. And I don't know when that ends. Like maybe that won't end until January 1st. But I think that I will do that in November. I really couldn't find any information on Sarah Wolf and the Send Me Their Souls book. Finished Secret Garden and I gave it four stars and I wrote the review. I really enjoyed that one. It was very magical narrating and a magical atmosphere. It definitely seemed like an early classic version of the found family trope. And so that was nice. But uh, it was good and I, I liked it. it. It fit for the bookish first bingo prompt of secrets in the family. That's, I think, where else am I on today? I am over 75% done with Crooked Kingdom. And that is still amazing. No complaints there. Every page, I'm like, I can't put this down. I don't want to read my other books. I just want to read Crooked Kingdom. So that's that's been a little rough for my TBR. <laughs> but um, the Ninja Daughter, I got to 25%. I am still about 40 pages behind what I need to be to catch up with my buddy read. So I will try and power through that a little more tomorrow. And oh, let's see what else am I into the void. I started that with an audiobook today by Tim Levin, and I'm really enjoying the audiobook. I have almost no complaints. We'll get to that in a second. I really enjoy how the sound effects are amazing. There's like these beautiful, peaceful wind chimes, and it really gets me is how she pronounces J E D I. She pronounces it the Jedi Council. She really enunciates die, and she really pronoun pronounces the first syllable like J instead of J. So, but this is like an official Star Wars book. So part of me is like, have I all been pronouncing Jedi wrong? Because the Jedi counts. <laughs> I've watched all the movies, and I don't remember anyone saying, I'm a Jedi. <laughs> I did finish The Bone Witch. Ooh. I was ready to give this book two stars by the ending. And then I thought to myself, there is one thing, one thing, because I am weak and have a very specific trope that I am very into, that... I would be okay with giving it with giving it like an extra half of a star if it did one thing. And I got to 95% and I was like, mm, that one thing is not going to happen in this book. This was a very, this was bland. And in the very last page, like almost possibly the last paragraph, the one thing that I said could happen did happen. I was I was shocked. I would say it's 3.5 stars just based off of that one line. <laughs> because because now I have to read the sequel and know how we got there. But yeah, so that's that's it for today. <laughs> Thank you.
Good evening. It is Saturday night and I really wanted to wear my Team Valor hat that I'd been wearing most of today, but then I remembered I can't film without these god awfully large headsets, which I am grateful for, for gaming, but not for vlogging. Okay, so today is a bit of a long update because I have been AWOL for the past two days now. I don't really have a good reason for it. Uh, two days ago, I finished Crooked Kingdom, and it was a lot. It was, it was a lot. I definitely am giving the book five stars still. I loved everything about the book. There was a part that was very tragic in the book, and I needed, like, a while to grieve <laughs> because it was my favorite series of this year, and I also... The ending was great, don't get me wrong, I am fully in support of the ending and it was very like true to character and very well thought out and not generic like happy ending, but my heart would have been happy with like an epilogue 10 years from now where like everyone's living happily on a family ranch and they're all just domestic and happy and have a bunch of little crows running around and that would have been... I wouldn't have said no to that, but I do, I understand, I understand why we got the ending that we did, but I, it took me a while, I needed to kind of just decompress from my reading for a little bit, and then yesterday I barely read at all because, well first I was getting a bunch of chores caught up on and some tasks out of the way, I got some reviews done that I needed to, uh, some photos done, and then... I didn't really read because I ended up staying up until 4.30 in the morning last night, and I've already been lectured by Michael. I downloaded Among Us, I and mean, I'll be a responsible human tonight, which is so much less fun. But I loved Among Us, and I, I lost my voice all of this morning. I was just drinking tea and praying that it would come back because I'd been screaming all night that my friends and loved ones were murdering me. <laughs> But it was great and I really enjoyed it. Besides that, just kind of an update on where I am with my books. So like I said, I finished Crooked Kingdom, five stars, definitely five stars. I just did a review of Six, and Crow Six of Crows that you can find on my Goodreads profile or you can find on my Instagram if you're interested in that, which was also five stars. And I don't think I rated a lot of books five stars this year, so I'm very happy with with getting to read that series. I can't remember who suggested it to me, but I'm very grateful to you. <laughs> I started Dragonfly and Amber as my next physical book. It's very autumny vibes with the orange cover, so I'm really enjoying that. But I was very confused. Now we start the book, and it's 20 years later or something like that and where Claire isn't the main character Jamie isn't even around and they I'm assuming their daughter is is all grown up and her last name is Randall so I have theories that I think I'm correct about as to why we're here and I have vented to my parents because they watch the show and they seemed their reactions make me feel kind of confident that my theories about how we got here are correct like maybe Jamie sent them there to protect them but I'm really not sure how that's going to play out and how we'll end up with the excerpt of Claire in France and still being pregnant unless we're having like flashback scenes I really don't want any more flashback scenes after reading The Bone Witch I am also reading The Ninja Daughter I think I just got to 30% on that. It's very clear that Tori Eldred knows what she's talking about and has done a lot of research for this novel. And I like that, but it feels a little bit much that we're 30% in and it feels almost as though every scene is a little bit of like a learning moment instead of necessarily just a scene. Like I'm learning how someone would graffiti a car instead of, you know, actually feeling in the moment like, oh, God, someone graffitied this car. And so that's, 
I don't think that it's bad, but it's not what I was expecting. So that's a little difficult to get through when my mind is kind of already like, what is happening with Dragonfly and Amber? So not the best combination, but we're here and I stick to my TBR list almost religiously. So yes, I'm reading Into the Void. I think that I'm 20% of the way through. It's an audiobook and the chapters are about 30, 30 to 40 minutes long. So I just turn it on and start cleaning. It's good, but my attention is not drawn in yet. I'm really interested in what happened with her brother and the kind of secret organization or cults that he is in. So that, yeah, I'm not really sure. I find his motives are unknown and I am curious to find out what they are and how he got to where he is now. But again, we are stuck with every other chapter being in the past and I'm just like, God, I need a break from switching timeline. Anyway, what else have I done? Oh, I finished reading my excerpt for A Vow So Bold and Deadly by Bridget Kemmerer, which comes out, I want to say, January 21st of next year. And I posted my review on NetGalley today. I have not posted it on Instagram yet, but I did give it five stars because I am very intrigued by how everything is still going on. And like I said in the review, I'm really happy that they remembered to not kind of sweep under the rug all of the conflict that was happening between the characters when we rolled up into the ending of the last book, A Heart So Fierce and Broken, because I know like there's this whole overarching war that is impending and has been going on for the whole, the whole of the, the entirety of the second book, but it seems like they definitely remember that there was a lot of tension like between Harper and Wren or... Liamara and her sister. So I'm really liking that. I like Liamara as a character, but, and I'm sure that I am in the minority because it's not the sh couple you're supposed to like or that is supposed to be together. I loved Harper and Gray. Getting the relationship that we have now and in going into book three, I don't love that and so I feel bad because that's not an excuse for me to not like Liamara. I'm just not happy with how things ended up. Okay. Hopefully we have just enough camera battery left to get this segment but it's my first technical unboxing even if it's not a box. I got my first book order since I started my vlog. And I did, before you all come for me, I did try to get this from my local bookstore, but they actually didn't have it available. So, ooh, it feels weird. Oh, wow. Okay, this is Vicious by V.E. Schwab. For the, I ordered this on a whim for my book because I managed to get my hands on both Game of Thrones 2 and Outlander 2 already from borrowing and just finding I'd already owned it. And I had a really strange dream where I <laughs> had a desperate need to buy this book. I have no idea why. I don't really know what it's about. And I haven't talked to anyone about it recently. So I am planning on reading Vicious by V.E. Schwab as soon as possible because when I woke up the next day, I watched a YouTube video that said you should literally follow your dreams. <laughs> so I got this book. And yeah, it's, it's my favorite shade of red as well. I'm not sure how I feel about the like matte, the matte texturing. It's strange. I don't know. And there's, it looks like we have a man, an old man maybe, and he he is standing on a pyramid or a triangle made of skeletons. This definitely seems like it could have been a great October read, but I already have my TBR for October, and it's full of books that I've been dying to read. Hopefully for November, like, not necessarily into the happy holiday season yet. But this is my first book purchase since I've started my vlog, and I'm very excited to read a book by V.E. Schwab. I know everyone is flipping out over um, The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, and I've heard great things about that, so I'm excited to read I like to read books kind of at least 
in chronological order from the author, even if the series don't really have anything to do with it. That's pretty much it for today. I have to wrap up really quickly because my camera apparently is about to die. It did die and I charged it for like three minutes and I plugged it back in really fast so I could open that and see the book. <laughs> I am going to make salmon burgers for dinner because my avocados are ripe finally and I don't want my tomatoes to spoil <laughs> beforehand and the avocados because we all know avocados are good for like 12 hours. <laughs> and I finally got my exercise ball aired up because apparently it's like a three-day process where you have to let the material air out and then you have to fill it up 75 percent and let the air just circulate properly and then you fill the, bol the ball up. So I'm done with that. I'm going to attempt. It's like a five-minute intense ab workout by Pamela Reef today. I haven't really worked out this week because I have sucked at that. I've just not been sleeping great. It's not that anything bad is happening. It's just that I finally know that like Michael will be home in a somewhat short amount of time. And I'm just so excited that it's making me not want to sleep. And I'm just kind of forgetting basic tasks because I'm like, I need to clean the house. I need to make sure I have the things for his coming home. And I'm just so excited that I'm forgetting like basic things basic things to adult or just human in general. I will get the videos all edited tomorrow for Sunday. I will try and be better next week about daily updates, but I really didn't have anything to update you guys on for the past few days. I put in a couple more requests for ARCs at NetGalley. I'm sitting at three, but they've been sitting for a little while, so I'm just waiting to see if I get approved or declined. And I am apparently getting a black buck shipped to me from Bookish First. Since I won that raffle, that should ship out mid-October. So if it does get here in time, I will try and put it on my November TBR list so that I can get that done close to whenever the release date is that I should look up. But yeah, that's pretty much it for me tonight. Uh, if you guys enjoyed the daily vlogs, give me a thumbs up below. Or if you want to see more daily vlogs, hit that subscribe button. Have a good night, guys.